Hello, everyone. Welcome back again to This Week in Guns, brought to you as usual by Patriot Patch Company and Primary Arms. This show offers commentary on the latest firearms industry news, information, and buzz. I'm your host, Matt LaRosier, and I'm here with my co-host, Rose the Corgi. Rose, how are you doing? That's right. Now, I had to hire this man to speak for you. Yes, but it's my only job. (laughs) It's like the uh, sign language people at rap concerts. Yes, (laughs) Yes, <laughs> that is that is what I do. Rose, hi, yes. welcome. This is my this is my new puppy. She is adorable. She was free. Free dogs are the best dogs. Yeah, it's this weird thing that we it's a weird thing that we do paying thousands of dollars for pets. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Yeah, but, um, and I mean I've done it. Yeah, no, like my dog was very expensive. And she's literally annoying me right now. So it's like I paid to be annoyed, <laughs> which. Right. All right. Yeah. We pay money to, to take on a liability. Yeah. Uh, but a sweet and cuddly liability. Yeah. There she, mine is awesome. Rose looks amazing. Yeah. Uh, Alex is probably just loving her new sister. Yeah. There you uh, Yeah. I have two female corgis now, so <laughs> I wish I was warned better about what that would be like. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, I've succeeded in getting them to stop trying to kill each other constantly. That's good. So that's, that's good. Did they try to use the guns or no? Uh, you know, I think that they have some respect for that. You know, they. I did in one of the stories we'll see. I did actually point out that my dogs can shoot pretty good, um, better than the Canadian Navy can. But, uh, <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> we'll for get that. to that at the end of the episode. I can't wait for it. Oh so, yeah, All it's right. a it's a good one. So primary right. arms. Yes. Yes, primary arms. Why don't we pull up that website? Boom, I got it up, in fact. And I was looking at, not, I, uh, today I'm on a knife kick. I've been learning about knives uh, for another show. I did an interview with somebody about knives. And so I was like, hey, does primary arms have knives? Dude, they've got knives. Really? Yeah, zero tolerance, yeah. actually. Some of my favorites. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. You know, you wouldn't have really thought about that. I mean, it's it, 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 primary arms. Like I, I guess I, knives are an arm. Yeah, they're a primary too. I would say. Yes, that's that's true. In fact, right now all I've got on me is a knife. Uh, I am actually <laughs> carrying a gun and I have a knife. So, I was at. asked. I was in a meeting earlier and I was asked how many guns I had in arm's reach, <laughs> and I counted. God, what was the answer? Like that I could actually grab with my hands, so I didn't have to like count stuff that was slightly out of arm's reach. It's yeah. twenty-two. Nice. Yeah, I was kind of happy about that. <laughs> You were just like, I am so American right now. Although there is an entire row that you can't see it on the bottom of my wall here. There's an entire row of Grendel pistols <laughs> <laughs> and they're like stacked like that. So oh, that's great. Yeah. I love it. I like them for yeah. some reason. <laughs> so yeah, primary arms, they, they have knives, they have other they have primary knives, arms. They have cool optics. They got great deals. We still got the fun in the sun sale going on. I see we got some really good prices on AR lower parts kits. So if you've been thinking of doing that build, and you've just been waiting. Well, now it might be the time. And if you haven't done that build, bro, come on. CAC AR-15 complete LPK thirty two ninety nine. What? Yeah. That's amazing. Nutty. Yeah, that is nutty. Uh, where do they go? They go to frn.deals slash PA. That's parrot apples. Parrot apples. Yeah. Perfect. And, uh, <laughs> is that, find it, yeah. is that actual phonetic uh, alphabet or I, uh, in the pre NATO? I don't, I know they used apples uh, like the Brits used apple in world war one. <laughs> like it was apple butter. Um, <laughs> Better than truffle butter. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> God. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. So, Oh God, this is just so ridiculous. This is this is on the gun feed where our dear and fearless leader, Her. Jonathan Jonathan H. Biden, mm-hmm. um, he th- I don't even know how to explain these like stupid meetings they have. Right. But there is this like virtual conference with all of these state attorney generals where they wanted to talk about how you know, what kind of strategies they can put forward to hold gun manufacturers and dealers accountable to their wrongful conduct, right? Uh, so 
there's just so much mess. <laughs> but basically, right, we know about the PLCAA, right? Yes. Protection, Protection. for Lawful Commerce and Arms Act. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it's protection of lawful commerce and arms. Biden would like it to be the protection from lawful commerce. Oh, yeah. That, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> he got to me. Uh, yeah, no, that's what that's what he should. Uh, yeah, that's what he, he's going to try to pass. Protection from lawful commerce and arms. <laughs> um, so what that basically says is, hey, uh, you know, slick plaintiff's lawyers, you can't create nuisance lawsuits just intended to, you know, prevent gun manufacturers from existing. And so Biden, it's like one of the steps of his comprehensive plan to reduce gun violence or gun crimes or whatever um, is to repeal the PLCAA. And I just think it's interesting that he points out it's his comprehensive plan to reduce gun crimes to repeal the law that protects lawful commerce and arms. Weird. Don't you think that if you like made more things a crime, yeah. that would actually increase the gun crime? I mean, yeah, I would think so. I would definitely think that. So that's, I mean, minor, you know, that's one minor imperfection in his plan. You know, I'm sure the rest of it is bullet, bulletproof. Um, but so the, they got together with all these state AGs and basically pressured them to make their own laws and policies kind of like New York's to make up these nonsense causes of action for, you know, slick plaintiff's attorneys to um, just sue gun makers for no reason. Uh, and like, this is, this is their grand strategy, man. All these attorney generals, it's like a who's who of infringement. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's also probably a who's who of something else. Uh, like, you know, is this the, the, the coalition of those who were, you know, had their heads in a toilet in elementary school? Probably. Yeah. Like Josh Shapiro, Rob Benito, Andrew Buck, like Mara Healy. These guys all suck. Yeah, they all suck. Like literally that list was like, oh, hate you, hate you, hate you, yeah. hate you, you suck. Uh, I, I hate, I hate this stuff so much. Yeah. And so basically they're, these attorney generals have agreed to all do, is this the, what was it? The, um, gosh, I can't remember. Like they're just going to go after gun companies. Yeah. So what they're trying to do is, is trying to create causes of action. Like we talked about in the New York episode Yeah, where you're basically saying that, the act of making and selling a gun creates some kind of public nuisance nuisance. That's what I can remember. Yeah. Yeah. And which is clown shoes bonkers. Um, it like, it doesn't align with nuisance law and it doesn't align with tort law either. So it's just like this unholy abomination of bad law. And, and this is being touted as a stopgap for them getting rid of the PLCAA. Right. I mean, yeah. So during today's discussion, attorneys general shared how PLCAA has served as a significant barrier to holding gun manufacturers and dealers accountable for unlawful conduct that led to shootings, homicides and other gun crimes. Can we, I wonder, go after them for public nuisance for creating infringements on the Constitution and Bill of Rights? I mean, we generally we used to call that treason, but yeah, exactly. That's kinda, that's punishable by like. Five days in jail, right? No, it's a, a light feather beating, ah. I think is what they said. It was definitely not. Oh, no, I read that wrong. It's actually death. Death. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually, well, the feather, <laughs> the feather is taped to the front of a, of a tank. No, the feather is called death. <laughs> That's what you guys have to understand is you have to understand the context that these laws were written in. The, back then it was understood that a feather was death. Well, yeah. So you just tickle them real good. Exactly. And, and then, and then they'll stop after coating them in hot tar. Yeah. That <laughs> this is, this is crazy, man. Yeah. They're, they're going hard. It seems like there's bigger problems in the country uh, to solve than their made up gun crime. Uh, yeah. Then uh, making up more gun crime. Yeah. It's just so, it's so annoying. And also the funny thing is, Okay, let's say you sue these gun manufacturers, right? Let's say you get rid of all the American gun manufacturers. Okay. Yeah. Fine. You think there still aren't companies sending them in by the boatload? No, of course there's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, and like, I really feel like... What's the most popular handgun in America? Uh, is it a Glock? Yeah, it's from a guy oh. who was really bad at making curtain rods in Austria. <laughs> I watched a video the other day. Uh, it was like 20 things you didn't know about Glock. It was actually very interesting. Yeah. And that, yeah, yeah he was terrible. Yeah. 
Yeah, he could not make the curtain rods good, so he had to do some other stuff. <laughs> he went from like the idea of Glock to actual actual pushing Glocks out the door in a very short amount of time. Apparently, yeah. it is pretty cool. It is, yeah. I, I thought it it was a very interesting story. Um, so what do you think? Like, I think Remington did us all a disservice by paying that thirty three million dollars for. Um, to the Sandy hook families like setting precedent like that, I think is going to have far reaching effects for other. And KCI is already under the gun as it were. I mean, Remington, as we know, is, is, you know, a, a total beacon for good business decisions, right? <laughs> like, you know, if, yeah. if we're going to look at a company uh, to, you know, gauge what a, what an ideal gun company is. And I think we should totally be looking at Remington. <laughs> okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair <laughs> enough. Bad example. <laughs> Cause um, yeah, that's the kind of crap that you only get. And um, y- there's a lot of problems with some of the American com- gun companies like um, Vanguard uh, bought out a bunch of Smith and Wesson and at least this is from what I remember, they bought out a bunch of Smith and Wesson and started putting like, they straight up filled the seats with anti-gun people and forced Smith and Wesson to like analyze, like do yeah. all these internal analyses and all this stuff. Like, yeah, I remember that it's, you know, the American gun market is just already kind of busted. I, I don't, the only thing that these kind of policies is going to do is, is just make guns even more expensive, which you know, we've talked about a hundred times is I don't know who it's good for. Um, it's probably good for importers, but it's not good for the American people. I guess, uh, Turkish guns. Hey, all, all those people that got those canics in, <laughs> who knew they were leading the charge instead of just the discount P 99 instead of just being shills <laughs> on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, just, speaking of canics, I love, I love showing people, oh, no, these, these, these are great. They're so innovative. And I'm like, yeah. And I take the slide off my P99 and put it on the Canik. <laughs> They're like, oh, uh, my bad. <laughs> so I don't hate Canics, but I kind of hate shills. And there's a whole lot yeah. of them on the internet right now. No, I don't hate Canics at all, but it's a discount P99. Yeah, that's fair. Like, and, and you know, I love the P99. I like the discount P99. Right. <laughs> oh, anyway, the, this next story, I'm sure you read about this. Yes. Um, yes. Mr. Kevin McCallum, political reporter at Seven Days, who covers Vermont's state house and state governments, um, he shot a gun. I'm, I'm, it was probably so. I like I see kids shoot guns. I'm sure he had a great time. It was probably, probably had fun, and he's probably totally pro gun now, right? I don't understand what you're talking about. Yeah, like because they're fun and they're not scary at all. And no, listen. While the pistol was manageable, even comfortable. Yeah. To hold and fire. Right. That's what I expect. The rifle was a different beast altogether. Yeah. Even easier and more comfortable, right? Everything about it. It's weight, tactical scope, and overall lethality. All right. You're getting it. Was downright intimidating. What? The fact that the first magazine refused to click into place didn't help either. Further unnerving me. <laughs> what if I just broke a $3,500 rifle? A fresh magazine worked just fine, though. And after loading it, I sent the target out. To 15 <laughs> yards <laughs> when ready I lined up the target in the crosshairs pulled the stock into my shoulder squeezed the trigger and <laughs> it's difficult to describe the impact physical and personal of that first shot felt like a meteor had struck the earth in front of me a deep shock wave coursed through my body the recoil rippling through my arms and right shoulder with astounding power. Being that close to an explosion of such magnitude, controlled and focused as it was, rattled me. I composed myself and continued to fire round after concussive round. The puffs of acrid gunpowder smoke carried downrange by a powerful ventilation system. My accuracy gradually improved until it became easier to hit the target with the rifle from 25 yards than with the pistol from 5 It was exhilarating, but I never got comfortable firing it. I'm not sure what scared me more. The power of that weapon or the fact that I could have taken one home that day. Is it weird that I have an erection? That's all right. Yeah. I mean, (laughs) like there's a few sentences in there that that are bad, but the rest of them are like, yeah, 
That's uh, that's guns. That's awesome, right? Yeah. It's, well, I mean, <laughs> I don't like even when I take somebody who's brand new to shooting, I do not let them shoot a rifle at bayonet distance. Uh, yeah, because that's but, uh, weak. <laughs> the, it's just don't do that. You know, you should give them enough. You with a rifle, especially with an optic, right? He says crosshairs. You should be able to instruct them well enough to begin their engagement at twenty five yards. Uh, yeah, without question. Also, was this an AR? It, uh, the general consensus is that it is. I didn't want to actually click on the link, but I'll do it now. Um, I wonder if this guy and Gersh Kuntzman are, are brothers. <laughs> brothers in sissy arms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that is that the guy? Is that the guy like with the beard? That's the guy that wrote this? Oh, wait, I, Come on, Colonel Sanders. Let's a- get it a- together. AR. Shots fired. AR. A gun store looks awesome. I this is a preposterously long article about just literally. I was just like AR fifteen, yeah, semi-automatic AR fifteen style rifle made by a company a company called Heckler and Coke. Oh, that's okay. why. That's why. It's because it's not oh, made in America. Oh, look at this! Look at this dude. Yeah. Oh, look at that. Oh, yeah. He shot a, a Mister Five Five Six. Yeah. Look at that uh, linear compensator directing the blast away from him. <laughs> yeah. You can see it. It's amazing. Ba-boom. Ba boom, yeah. Uh, wow, what a girl, and that's insulting to girls, actually. So yeah, you shouldn't say that. Um, Which just a like little yeah. like physically small and weak, yeah, bad person. There is literally nothing I can say about this guy that's not insulting to the guy that to the to the thing or person or whatever that I compare him to. So like, he is a horrible example of humanity. I mean, like, yeah, Kevin McCallum. It's a little blue eyed ham and eggs, dude. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I don't like it. I don't, I don't have anything in common with him. No, me either. <laughs> you know, I was, I was kind of think I was like, if you leave out some words, this is an amazing, uh, pro. It, gun it is article. interesting, right? Yeah. Because he, he's like, I was able to do it. You know, I, I, I got better. Right? This, if you just leave out the, like, Awful crying. Yeah. Like uh, if you leave out was downright intimidating. If you leave yeah. out rattled me like this is a, this is a pro gun article. So just take right. out those four words. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, yeah, I do think you leave in the, um, the, like the concern about handling an HK rifle. Right. <laughs> yeah, just, I don't want to touch this. It's too expensive. That is, that's a rational feeling. I it, think it is. <laughs> but yeah, like, I don't know. I, th- I wonder, and I'm sure that people read this and they're just like, uh, oh my God, that's so terrifying. I don't want to do that. That's he, he is awful. so brave. So oh yeah. Brave. No, he had an LPVO on it. Yeah. Oh yeah. 15 and he yards. starts at 15 <laughs> yards. Don't let someone do that. Yeah. You do not know. allow them to do that. You know, the dude standing behind him is just like, oh my God. Yeah. As he set up his iPhone on the little dingle there and Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of wondering, uh, he probably didn't say anything while he was there. He probably just, no, he probably didn't went home. No, actually, and, you know what he was probably doing? Being exceptionally polite. Yeah. He was probably being a bro. He's probably like, oh man, yeah. nice. Awesome. That's yeah, sweet. That was fun. I had a nice time. Yeah. I'm not great. crying. And, and then he freaking went out to his car and just, <laughs> Yeah, I could have given the money and taken it. Or does he feel weird that like, and you know, I've said this before, people who like are people who act like this are, and who are like so terrified by the idea of having guns. I really do think that those people have intrusive thoughts. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And that are, are troubled by them. Well, intrusive thoughts are actually very normal. I don't know. Very normal. If we talk about I mean, that. are troubled by the thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, because they have impulse control problems is my, yeah. is my thought. It's like exactly. impulsive thoughts, mixed with impulse control problems are probably a bad combination. I wouldn't know because I'm actually, you know, a man, Yeah, a man's man. (laughs) Yeah. I don't, I, I'm the same way. I have very bad intrusive thoughts, Yeah, but I have the wherewithal to not act on any of them. Yeah. I go like, I'll be there and I'll just be like, ah, and then that's it. (laughs) Dude, I had one today and I was like, oh yeah, don't do that. (laughs) That's, that's bad. Yeah. Bad brain. (laughs) Well, it was weird, man. Cause when I first got into guns, like I I had a few intrusive thoughts. Uh, Have we talked about those, these on the show? We have, but I think it's good to talk about, right? Cause a lot of people never even hear about the, 
it was yeah. a concept. And it was like, you know, what, it, what if I just pulled this trigger and like, you know, someone died mm-hmm. or it could have been more particular or specific than that in my head. But you know, like you think that and you're like, Oh my God, like, no, what, what? No, don't ever do that. Never want right. that to happen. That would be terrible. And the then, reason I store all my guns with the muzzles in like very safe directions is because I have intrusive thoughts. Right. Like I'm just like, and I just think, what if somehow it gets loaded and somehow it fires and it's yeah. pointing that direction? Yeah. And, and that's not terribly rational because I don't, you know, like if it's a weapon I'm storing, it's usually not loaded, but I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to help my brain and I'll point it somewhere safe. Yeah. And so it can actually be a good thing. Yeah. But I was like, so concerned about it at first. I was like, yeah. Oh man, this is, that's not should good. be around this. And then yeah. I, I happened to read an article, uh, and the article's like, yeah, that stuff's actually very normal. It happens to people and all with all in all, all kinds of things, not just guns. It happens in right. all aspects of life. And it's absolutely a hundred percent like normal, healthy thoughts. And if you mm-hmm. have them, it's not a scary thing. It's like a, a good thing because you're, you're cognizant of the results of misusing the thing. Exactly. You're, it's like your brain setting a boundary. Yes. Of like, <laughs> Whatever the line is, this is over it. Absolutely. Which, <laughs> and, and, but I, I imagine that those intrusive thoughts, I said impulsive, I meant intrusive, yeah. mixed with impulse control problems, which a lot of people that I see, I don't want to paint with too broad of a brush, but I see yeah. a lot of people that appear to have impulse control problems that, you know, scream and, and talk about that are all very progressive politics. And uh, yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot of the people that I've met and I'm not, and again, I'm not saying that this is. This is my observations. A lot of the people who I've met who've been very anti-gun were also had alcoholism problems, right? Like had a lot of personal problems and, you know, and I think everybody who makes their own decisions and how to live their life make, you know, I think that's good. And if you do decide that you have severe impulse control problems, maybe, maybe it's rational, right? To stay away from guns. Maybe it is, but you should like one talk to a therapist, not saying that insultingly, no, actually talk to a therapist. Maybe, maybe you're miscategorizing how you think about things. And if you're, you know, if you get a good therapist that you trust and who tells you, yeah, that you should probably avoid dangerous objects. Well, that's fair, but don't tell everyone else to, to do that. You know? Yeah. And if you Google like our, in, our invasive, geez, I keep calling, saying the wrong thing. Invasive thoughts, normal. Yes. They're normal. Every article that I'm looking at. Is the word invasive? Uh, well, it's intrusive and invasive. They're used. Okay, they're yeah. used. They just throw them both around. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. So, uh, wait, here's intrusive thoughts and how to deal with them. It's like a Harry Potter book. Mm. Uh, unwelcome, closely related to OCD, blah, blah, blah. It can be devastating. There are ways to deal with them. I'm not going to read those ways. You can Google it yourself. Yeah. If, yeah. And most people do suffer from them. And it's totally normal. I remember my, when I didn't know it was normal and I told one of my coworkers, I was just like, I don't know why, but like, I, I thought of this and you know, that's not okay. And he goes, Oh, it's called an intrusive thought. And I go, (laughs) Oh, it's like, there's a word. I thought like I was crazy. And he goes, Oh no. The other day, my, um, you know, my, um, stepsister or whatever handed me her baby and I'm holding the baby. And I thought, geez, what if I threw this into the road? (laughs) And he goes, and he's like, and I was just like, Oh, that thought <laughs> right. kept, kept going, you know, I, w- I wonder if Dave, uh, Dave Chippy has intrusive thoughts. <laughs> I've it's guaranteed <laughs> like, look at his face. It's been a bad week for him. Good. I, I wish them all to be <laughs> right. Um, so everybody has hopped on the hate Chipperson train recently, which is funny because like the guy's already, you know, done, but, it's kind of like, you know, that South Park episode where I almost feel, not South Park, that Simpsons a bit, I almost feel like it's like, stop, he's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> but Mitch McConnell comes out with a statement and and he's highlighting allegations, which we've got links to racial discrimination, where people had pointed out that, um, that you know, there was a gentleman in the ATF that was up for promotion and apparently... <laughs> <laughs> like was very forcefully arguing that he must have cheated on his test. Um, and then a bunch of former agents got together and penned a letter saying, Hey, uh, 
Shipman's views and record would create serious and long lasting problems for the Bureau and the effective execution of its law enforcement mission. Wow. That's not like a normal thing to happen when you're no. Cause like these are guys that, you know, they're, they're in that fraternity together. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's interesting. So it's either Chippy did something actually very wrong. Um, and everybody knows it or he was like the peon of the fraternity and they just don't like him or maybe both could be. Yeah. I, I mean, my guess would actually be both with the way he looks. Yeah, but that's the the McConnell headline. Biden administration's ATF nomination somehow gets worse every day. Ah. It's it, it, it is remarkable. Like what a terrible pick and the fact that he's even still I mean, the fact that they're even still this is a thing that we're talking about just shows the blindness of the administration. Yeah, the ludicrousness. Yeah. It's the total disconnect with uh, you know, it, it's pretty clear to me that they consider, um, well, okay, that they might possibly think of Americans as, as subjects because, like, you know, when you just get a just total, like, a total recitation of somebody, you know, an em- emphatic rejection of a candidate from m- more than, like, more than just the people you expected from, you got to, like, think about what you did, you yeah. know. Yeah, it- And it's just, it it, it is odd. And like, I get it. I've watched enough of the West Wing to know that these nominations are are a big deal, you know, internally and for public consumption. And like, it's a big deal. And to have, this might be his first nominee that he's put up to have it fail. Like that's, that's really bad for the administration. Uh, The optics are terrible. Uh, It sets a terrible precedent for them politically. Like it's a bad thing. And uh, so I guess that's probably why this is still even a thing that we're talking about, but also it shows a blindness uh, that that is concerning. Yeah. Yep. Very concerning. But uh, I've gotten so tired of talking about Chipman though, but (laughs) (laughs) for those listening, I I keep flashing my favorite chippy picture up on uh, up on the screen. He looks like he's having like a neural episode. <laughs> that image, right? That's like not like a human thing. That's like <laughs> um it's really odd. It you reminds know, that me. one Have you played Cruelty Squad? No. Oh, well, I see that image and I think divine link severed. Uh, <laughs> you are no longer a human. You are a flesh automaton am- animated by neurotransmitters. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me a lot of someone else. Uh, let's see if I can. Oh, the balloons. Yeah, <laughs> that was great. Uh, the, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. They are basically twins. Flesh automatons. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. oh, man. I'll be glad when he's gone. <laughs> or not, uh, not gone. I'll be glad when he's no longer a thing that I have to listen to or talk about. When he's gone from the television and the, us having to talk about every week, exactly. because like every single week, you know, we try to bring you guys up on all the latest news and there's always some, there's always some foible, yep. some faux pas, some fuss. Yep. But let's go over to something somewhat positive. Um, Connecticut federal court, there was a lawsuit basically um, a guy was pulled over, driver stops, hands uh, the cop his driver license and carry permit and informs the cop that he's got a gun and a permit. Cop arrests him, right? Uh, cuffs him, puts him aside, right? Like a temporary arrest. And so the gentleman sues. State tries to dismiss it. And basically that's where we're at right now. The motion to dismiss was denied. So the lawsuit gets to go forward. Um, let me read this language from the case here. In light of the uncontested fact that plaintiff presented his pistol permit to defendant before or at the time he disclosed that he was in possession of a pistol and the absence of any f- other indicia that plaintiff was otherwise violating the law, no reasonable officer could believe probable cause was present. Any contrary holding would eviscerate Fourth Amendment protections for lawfully armed individuals by presuming a license expressly permitting possession of a firearm was invalid. So... So, all right. So gets pulled over, hands the cop, his driver's license and permit to carry Mm -hmm. says that he has a gun and a permit for whatever reason he gets handcuffed. Right. And then it says the cop gets carried away. Like what did the cop do? Like beat him up because he had a gun or just like beat him up because you know, America. Do we know? know I don't know. I'm just curious. 
so okay, I, so there's a Volat conspiracy article about this. I'm actually just not um, understanding what even is happening here. Okay, so at blah blah, blah guy was driving a Kia Sorento out here. He stopped his vehicle with the engine running to unfreeze his iPhone GPS, okay. <laughs> um, which was located in a holder mount of the dashboard. The t- <laughs> The dark and high crime area where plaintiff starts his vehicle was well known for prost- prostitution, drug transactions, and other criminal activity. I'm reading from the case. Um, as he was trying to fix his phone, the officer approached his vehicle, knocked on the window, and requested the license. He hands the cop his license and gun permit, which he removed from the back of his sun visor. At the time the, the driver hands over his license and gun permit, he told the cop that he was in possession of a gun, which and where it was located, the driver's side door cop then handcuffed and searched him and the cop forcibly moves, you know, shoves him into the back of the police car. Um, while he was inside the police car and and handcuffs, the officer ran a check to determine whether the permit was valid. So basically I see the question is right. So you have a fourth amendment right against unreasonable searches and seizures, including of your body. Yes. And so this is a, you know, the arrest, right? The arrest and aggressive handling of him, to check the status of his permit. I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, what, I, yeah, I agree. Fourth Amendment does like forbid that. I, I agree right. that that's unlawful. Huh. Okay. And then this. And case- also, I have a problem with the stop, right? Yeah. The basis for the stop was the car was stopped at night yeah. in an area known for drugs and prostitution. Right. Does that mean just cars aren't allowed to stop? But I mean, is that is that probable cause, right? Like uh, he's either in process of he plans to commit a crime, is in the pro, in the process of committing a crime, or or so the has problem already? is that there's a traffic infraction for stopping on the road. Okay, so you, you get probable cause for that, but I think that's a bunch of crap. Yeah, you know? like, that's I like, agree. Like pulling over to do whatever. Like I don't care. I, sometimes I pull over because I have to take a phone call or something because. You know, apparently I can't drive and talk at the same time, but yeah, I think that's a bunch of horseshit personally, but I mean, it, it's reasonable to think that the the cop may have thought that he was engaged in the act of soliciting prostitution or something like that. I think that prostitution should be legal. Uh, so that's dumb, but to then put him in the back of a squad car, like it was just to check. So like he hands you a facially valid. So it wasn't as if he said, I have a permit, but it's not with me. He handed over a facially valid permit. Yeah. And then the cop wanted to check it. Well, and then I just looked this up. This is in Connecticut. Connecticut has no duty to inform. Exactly. I just read the statute. It has, yep. you're, you're not, there's no duty whatsoever unless you were asked by the officer. And I am a big proponent of, you know, don't ask, don't tell like, right. I don't tell them that I'm carrying a gun. It's like most of the time it is literally going to be a financial transaction, right? They're trying to make me pay the system for the, to pay for their jobs. So I don't want to add any complexity to that situation at all. If I get pulled over, I am not in a duty to inform state. Uh, I, okay, sure. Yep. I'll take the ticket. Sounds great. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. Yeah. Uh, other than that, no, I don't, I don't add complexity to a financial transaction. The best way to get them to not bother you is to not speak English. <laughs> Fair enough. And when, when I sit there and just speak French, they just want to give me the ticket and just wander off. That sounds amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I don't add. And I, a lot of people are like, well, I want to know I'm a good guy. Okay. Well, like, here yeah, you go. Uh, yeah, it's cool. It doesn't matter. Boom. Yeah. Here you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Look, you want to see my Glock? It's got a Punisher skull on it. <laughs> oh, boy. It's got a thin blue line Punisher skull on it. I'm on you, buddy. Here we go. Yeah, that's going to help you every time. Here we go. No, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I just, yeah, I don't get it. And I hear the argument. I hear all the arguments and I see stories like this and I'm like, see, 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 don't do it. <laughs> Look don't what happens. Do it. Like nobody wants to. And, you know, people might be like, what's the problem? He didn't get he just, it was just five minutes in the back of a squad car. What's the big deal? Yeah. That's five minutes. Right? He couldn't live his life. And also like getting, handcuffed and thrown around is like really horrible because you, it takes away all of your agency Yeah, as a human being. It's it, like somebody is physically restraining you and physically moving you and putting you somewhere. It will make you feel like a piece of trash. It, it really does. Like having been there, it really, really does. It's awful. Yeah, it is. It's, it's serious stuff. It will have, and especially if it's never happened to you before, it will have long term effects on your psyche. And so, you 
cops should only be allowed to do that and are only allowed to do that when there's actually something going on. And so that's why, you know, it, it, we should be able to sue and get money if they, if they do that. And um, so, you know, props to the, you know, federal circuit, uh, the uh, district court there for ruling the right way, preventing that motion to dismiss. And let's hope that they rule the right way going forward. It really seems like common sense, doesn't it? Like unlawful search and seizure. Like that seems pretty unlawful. Like all he did was admit that he had a thing that he was legally allowed to possess and boom, removal yeah. of rights. Yep. It, 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 yeah, a, a seizure of his body. Yeah. Right. Of the only one that he'll ever have. It's a, it. And you know, when you think about it like that, it really does make you mad. Yeah. No. Uh, it, yeah. I'm kind of mad about it right now. Yeah. I get a little, and then people, I get so upset when people categorize stuff like that. Well, nothing happened. You know, we just got, we just got roughed up a little bit. Okay. You know, I always, whenever people say that, I'm like, when was the last time you got arrested? Yeah. <laughs> Usually they haven't. Right. No, it's or pretty- either they haven't or they do it a lot. Yeah. Cause uh, like generally <laughs> you don't want to be there <laughs> and there's a thousand other things I could think of that would be better than being there. And yeah. Like, um, I don't know. Cholera. Exactly. <laughs> Ebola. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. This is a, uh, but you know what? There's one thing that they can just stop all this stuff. Yeah. Just giving we, everybody guns. Taekwondo. What now? Yeah. Uh, is this like a segue to the next season of the karate kid or. <laughs> <laughs> so in, um, Pennsylvania news today, this headline was unironically posted fight gun violence through martial arts and escalation lessons. All right. I mean, that's a pretty sweet, uh, flying roundhouse. Yeah. So there was a kick, a a martial arts free one month martial arts program, kick up guns down. Uh, I don't understand it, especially because most of the, it says many participants of the program are in elementary and junior high and some haven't started kindergarten. Hmm. I'm going to take a counterpoint here. I think that this is not a terrible thing. No, it's not a terrible thing. I think it's odd. There's nothing wrong with it at all, actually. Yeah, I think it's it's odd to categorize it as a gun thing. Okay. A hundred percent agree with that. Yeah. Like yeah. I think, cause this is Southwestern Philadelphia, if I'm not mistaken, that's not the best neighborhood, like not the best area. Is that where it is? Uh, yep. South, Southwestern PA. South Philly. That's yeah. where the Fresh Prince uh, the uh, uh, of Bel Air. Like, oh yeah. The song. Yeah. This. Yeah. Um, so like, Teaching. I heard there's a couple guys out there that are up to no good. So. <laughs> That's what I heard too. But like teaching, like some conflict yeah. resolution and some uh, violence avoidance and things like that, that, that is a good thing. I think that having programs like this are absolutely a good thing. I also think that framing it like this is, what, what, what do they call it? Uh, it? Somehow it has to do anything to do with guns whatsoever. Like violence is not the answer, but we're teaching you how to commit physical violence. Right. So most of it, most of it is like, uh, you know, at the beginning, it's like there's a better way to handle conflicts than picking up a gun and shooting somebody that is actually really valuable, you know, and a yeah. lot of violence happens because of poor communication skills. Yeah. Um, but then it goes down. And it, Kim Smith, head of South Philadelphia for junior stakeholders, but uh, said the city applied for a grant in January after the city ended with in 2020 with 499 murders and more than 2200 shooting victims. It was the rise of gun violence when people were supposed to be inside during the pandemic. That was like the impetus for this. Huh? Um, well, but hell actually, you know what we talked about, like, you know, giving communities more money. Uh, I think the, yeah. the current administration was going to give communities more money. That was like part of their whole thing. And, you know, we talked about it and said, you know, some of these things may be good. Like, I wonder if that's a, if that, if this program is a result of that, like they could call it whatever they want. I don't, I don't care, but right. I think these are valuable lessons and teaching a bit yeah. of discipline. And well, and actually, you know what, if you're gonna, like, if you have a mission that's related to, um, like if you're super concerned about gun violence or whatever, this is actually a productive thing to do. Yeah. I don't know how much dogma or crap they were spouting during the thing. I guess but a just lot. from, yeah, but yeah, but it, even who knows, but from what I see from the outside on this, uh, I would actually like say that I would applaud this as if it's a form of gun violence prevention. I think it's actually uh, could be applauded. 
Yeah, no, I totally agree because uh, they're they're. And, and I'm making an assumption here that this is a, a bad neighborhood with high risk, with high risk uh, youths, the two youths, uh, like I'm making some assumptions there, but we're going to these high risk areas where gang violence and drugs and things are, are, are a big problem. Poverty is a big problem and they're giving them an outlet with which to get rid of that. They're teaching them some conflict avoidance. They're teaching them that violence isn't the answer because, and we all know Taekwondo is just basically like uh, kick dancing. Calisthenics. Yeah. yeah. Um, was it actually Taekwondo? I just said that because it looked like Oh, it. I don't know, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah. I don't think it was terribly clear. Okay. Fair enough. But like, yeah. I think that that is a good thing. You're going to the right place. You're teaching these principles to the right people. And honestly, like, I mean, out of those 499 murders and 2,200 uh, shootings or I don't, I don't remember what they, how they f- organized that, uh, 2,200 shooting victims, 499 murders out of those, like how many of those are probably gang related, uh, mm-hmm. in, in some way. And maybe it could be, you know, attributed to a breakdown in communication or a, you know, failure to deescalate, yeah. um, yeah. stuff like that. I took so, Taekwondo when I was a kid. Like I, I learned a lot of, I got a lot out of it. Not the ability to fight, but I got a lot of other things out of it. Yeah. there's uh, So there was actually a bunch of martial arts schools that got together in this, so I'm guessing it's a mixed... That's cool. You know, mixed program. They probably learn a little bit of everything. Eh, you know, that's cool. That's You know, it's interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so you know what? Actually, thumbs up. Uh, uh, thumbs up, kick up, guns down. Uh, kick up, guns down. Yeah. Bad yeah. name. Cool. Cool program. Yeah, bad name. Weird dogma. But you know what? You're actually not hurting anything. Right. They're not taking my rights away. Yeah. They're actually taking the message to the people most likely to perpetrate these crimes against each other. Like right. all good in my opinion. And I hope by making these assumptions, it's not like a racist thing or like a, a, a it wasn't a classist, until you presumed it a was. classist thing. <laughs> like it just makes sense to take, like this is how I think things should be done. Like take it to the places and the people that are most likely to, to do the things, not, just every single American that wants right. to exercise their second amendment rights. Well, and also like I always say, you ask why five times, you know, why something's happening. And I think a lot of times it does come down to conflict management skills, the ability to negotiate with people, the ability to resolve issues without violence. And, um, and so if you identify that and your objective is to reduce violence, which I think is noble, well, hell, you know, giving people some tools to do that. It's, it's a good, uh, it's a good thing to do. Yeah. I'm down with it. I'm down. With it. And they may be totally anti-gun. They probably hate guns right. and hate our, hate our rights, but like this is a step in the right direction and good on them for actually doing a thing that may have an impact. Right. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Actually walking the walk is yeah, nice. I agree. Um, so I'm going to transition <laughs> to our next story now. Um, so using, <sighs> We we agree that sometimes a firearm is the right tool for the job, right? Yeah, unless you're building a house or something. Maybe I mean you never know. You never know, right? Um, I need to but, drill a hole. <laughs> yeah, but if you need to drill a hole, it's it's over there. Um, well, what would you think of somebody who identifies as in the profession of arms? What what would I? I, would I mean, you think that they could like, you operators. know, like how would you think they'd operate a gun? Yeah. Like, well, I would say, oh, yeah. you're in the profession of arms, like yeah. baller, dude. Let's show so me some stuff. They'd gun good, right? Yeah. Real good. Well, the Royal Canadian Navy put up this unbelievably cringe little video to advertise whatever. Um, let's just let's just take a look at that. All right. It's only 20 seconds. All right. I'll throw it up here. Here we go. All right. So they're yeah, on the ocean. On yeah. They got, yeah. they got some targets. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> what just happened in my life? Oh God. Uh, I can't, can't watch it again. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to, all right, don't worry. I got you. Oh, thank God. <laughs> We're going to, so let's go over this. All right. So one, the distance of these targets, it looks like it's about, I don't know, 10 feet <laughs> feet. Yeah. And could, the shot placement. They're real bad. 
everywhere but the black. Yeah, they're like, hey, hide over boar doesn't exist. It's a uh, myth. Ain't real. Yeah, don't, myth. don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. Okay. And then I love the, uh, this guy, like, it looked like he pooped his pants when they zoomed in on him. <laughs> Doing that eye twitch thing. Yeah, right there. <laughs> that. And then here we go. Boing. Okay. Boing. <laughs> and then all of these guys. Look to the, all right. So to the people who are listening, like, uh, they, I'm going to start with the pistol. Like yeah. the, the dude's shooting a pistol, two handed grip and has such horrible grip control. It's that like it's he's like, holding an eel. Yeah. It's like bouncing out of his hand. Like it's slimy yeah. and electric. Yeah. And it's really bad. And again, like I think that maybe focal length of these lenses might be a thing. So maybe they're like 15 yards away, 45 feet, something like that. But Probably not. I kind of doubt it. Yeah, yeah. because of the Look height at the size of the bow. Yes, the ship. and they're probably aiming for the black, and they're hitting like five inches low, which means they're really, really close. <laughs> um, and then, then they've got they're up here with their C eights, which is the Canadian Colt. Um, and the way they're holding these, it looks exactly like you know if you hand somebody a shotgun for the actual first time or any kind of long gun for the literal first time, they'll do this weird instinctive thing where they put it out and then put their head all the way conceivably far back, like do this weird neck thing. Yeah. All of these alleged operators are doing that here with their C8s and don't even have cheek welds on them. And this guy, they walked up to him. They're like, Bob, this is a rifle. He's like, is pillow? And no, Uh, Bob, it's a rifle. Is pillow? No, (laughs) no. (laughs) He's like laying his head on it. Like it's a pillow. Like it's comforting to him. Okay, that's oh close. God. I don't care what focal, what what lens yeah. you have. That's close. It is literally ten feet away with a carbine. Yeah, and that like it? that's your advertisement. And so, of course, we were making fun of them, and instead of just ignoring us, they reply, "Heads up, C training hashtag Twitter trolls are trying to take over your job." Everyone's except an expert. Thanks for your feedback. <laughs> <laughs> Here, enhance. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're completely missing the target. And it's not um, even like it's just hide over bore. Like may, if hide over bore, but you have a you know a, a ragged hole, one ragged hole, right. that's fine. These are no no. They're shooting ten moa from ten feet. Right. This is, we had some really good tweets here. It's like, they're getting dragged. Let's see the ratio. Oh yeah. 54 quote t- tweets, 47 likes. <laughs> um, on, and that's on their little reply. The yes. original one is even worse. Uh, but, some of my favorites were everyone's an expert except the guys in this video, LMFAO. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so there, there's some really good ones. Oh yeah, that's right here. Except the guys in this video don't need to be an expert to shoot better than a 12 inch group. Just saying. Uh, there um, was one by Navigo. Can, can you guys let me ratio Canada? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then I I posted. Imagine aggressively disincentivizing the people of your nation from owning or shooting guns, then being upset when Americans point out your allegedly professional armed forces fail to operate firearms at the most <laughs> basic levels of proficiency. And. Uh, uh, performed much better than their tweet <laughs> imagine being canadian and failing pistol quals in 4k ultra hd <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh god it's pretty yeah, people it's people good. brought out uh people added uh c nypd um, <laughs> oh my god high speed low drag edit letting it still ni- go flop flop, flop, flop. <laughs> <laughs> letting a nine by 19 kick you around absolutely awful groups at less than 10 yards Canadian uh, military. Why would the trolls do this? <laughs> uh, it's all just so good. Oh man. Yeah. The, so one thing we learned is that whatever it is, the Canadian Navy is protecting. It's not safe. Uh, the other thing is God, they, they just don't know how to deal with Twitter trolls. <laughs> just like I, I see, I see a TikTok video in my future. It's just this video playing. And then it cuts to me like putting on body armor and grabbing a gun. And someone would be like, what are you doing? I'd be like, going to take over Canada BRB. <laughs> yeah. This is a, Johnny, the human says nice two foot distance grouping leafs. Very cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. They, they, they are, they're getting clowned and they deserve it. It's, it's tough. It's tough. Oh my God. They're getting, yeah. Dude with the pistol is going to get it taken away. 
Uh, right. They're all like totally getting some, uh, getting some ass chones right now. <laughs> like who put this oh, on the internet? <laughs> and they like picked it as their hill to die on. Right. Like, you know, they, they can't just let it go. Like Nepal is going to take them over. Uh, and people just keep posting, like people keep taking this, the screen grabs of the targets and oh my God, it's devastating. Yeah. That's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. That, <laughs> this is not like, this isn't like a normal, you know, Oops. Wrong one. It's okay. I, I'm still scrolling. I'm still looking at, oh, it was Canadian Navy seething. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's They're hilarious. Good. They're good. But yeah. So anyway, Canadian Royal Canadian Navy, not that, not that intimidating really. No, it also very sensitive. <laughs> so there's FYI, any yeah. of you out there with boats. <laughs> thanks for your feedback. No, thank you for the entertainment. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for your feedback. Oh, oh man. Goodness. Well, so that's good. Yeah, that is good. I enjoy that very much. What are you eating? What are you eating? Oh boy. Patches. He's crunching them. He's crunching them. That nice PVC that we like. Yep. The beard comb. <laughs> Not gonna oh, lie. Yeah, the beard comb. I still <laughs> on occasion comb my beard with a patch. <laughs> it's multi-use oh yeah it actually I just trimmed my beard did you notice i did actually yeah thank you right when you mentioned it <laughs> <laughs> i was actually arguing like uh my mom kept telling me you need to cut your beard you're looking ridiculous and uh i was like no my uh my fans love it because i did get general like positive comments yeah. on youtube and then finally they'd have enough. I got like a bunch of comments in a row that said, all right, dude, it's time to trim your whiskers. <laughs> so I did. Which, which just makes me double down and grow it so I can join ZZ Top. <laughs> they have an opening. That's all I'm saying. Oh, <laughs> too, soon, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> it's, nah, it's never too soon when it's celebrities. But yeah, the patches, they're awesome. Uh, I actually just got a care package and he had a bunch of, you know, the tens that you hang on the wall, like decorative tens, the, the 10 signs, T-I-N. Yeah. Like, yeah. uh, had some of those for the, the tree of Liberty it needs to be watered every now and then with the blood of Patriots like that one, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. That's going to go in the lobby here at WLS HQ. And, uh, they, they sell all that stuff. Really cool. Got a lot of stuff for sale guys. Check out their website. And then when you're there, there's a secret code. Pa uh, the website is patriotpatch.co. What's the code? Yep. Twig 10. T W I G 10. Mm-hmm. It's pretty awesome. Go check them out. Support them. Love them. Give them a go. All right, man. That was awesome. That was a good laugh. Royal Canadian yeah. Navy and um, Matt L. Uh, that was great. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you next week.